everybody. So we're out in the shop with another daily vlog and on this one I'm gonna be working on the leather sheets. So I need to go ahead and get some stitching done on one of these and I figured I might as well bring y'all along let y'all see me do some of the stitching on it and I'm gonna be talking about profiles. You know I've got all of these templates back here and all my different knife profiles that I've made. I'm gonna give you a little bit of insight into how I come up with my profiles and different things that I think through whenever I'm making them. I'm gonna focus on a couple of them, but we'll talk more about that when we get over here to the bench and start doing some stitching. So let's get over here, let's work on that. So like I said, we're gonna be working on the stitching for this leather sheath right here in today's daily vlog. Now, the thing that I've already done is I already started from down here and I'm working my way up. I didn't want y'all to have to watch the whole entire process because really it's a very repetitive motion. It's the same exact thing over and over again and you're primarily just focusing on my hands in one particular position. So I wanted to show y'all a little bit, give y'all some of the stuff that I've seen and learned on this process and hopefully that helps y'all out or maybe y'all can give me some info that y'all have and we'll go from there. <laughs> now I'm going to be doing the stitching and talking about a couple of things like knife profiles because I had somebody ask me a question about this and we'll get into that here in just a second but when it comes to the stitching the number one thing that someone or that someone that everybody told me was how to actually do the stitch. It's got a little crossover thing. I'm going to show you what that is because I'm going to be repeating that all the way down. Now before we get into that, in this first two holes whenever I started this, because if this is what's different than what you're about to start seeing, I pulled my thread through, pulled it all the way through to where it was even, and then I ended up coming through to the second hole pulled it all the way through, went back in the bottom hole, then back into the second hole, and then I started my stitch. So this is doubled up on itself down here as the, the first stitch, and then I've just been doing the process that you're about to see right now, which is we're going to do this left one first, come in this hole, pull it through, I'm going to dangle my needle and thread down, kind of get it out of the way. Bring my right one, bring it through, and then we're going to end up taking this loop right here and looping it around that needle, pulling this through just a little bit, and then getting this to come across and then we're going to pull this thread all the way through and snug that up on itself and then we're going to just keep repeating that same process as we come through this so pull this all the way through lay it down so that it doesn't tangle up Grab our other needle, pull it through, loop around, pull it through, and tighten it. Now this particular thread is waxed cotton, and this is actually only one of the four strands that was that made up this thread. I didn't want the thickness that it came in. I wanted it to be a little bit thinner like it is right here. So I ended up fraying all of that. And uh, not fraying it, but unwinding it, if you want to call it that. And just using this strand, which is also multiple strands, inside here. So that's what I ended up doing. And then the little trick for the needle here is I ran the thread through the hole, the eye here, and then I stabbed the thread, and then, which is the hole you can see right there, stabbed through it, pulled it through, and then as you pull it through, it knots itself. Really cool little thing that I saw on a few different uh, knife makers 
setups. Pull that through, dangle it down. Now, as we start doing this some more, I'm just going to start talking to y'all about the whole uh, knife making process with my templates and profiles and stuff like that. So, when it comes to the profiles that I make, you know, different ones, y'all see my templates on the wall behind me on pretty much every intro. You saw them in the intro for today. These are two that I'm going to really hit on because I've only got, you know, I've got probably 100 different profiles that I've drawn up and I've probably made at this point probably about 65, 75 knives and I've used a lot of different profiles. I mean, because y'all for one, y'all see the, the knives that I make for the channel and then I also have commission pieces that I make in the background. I don't really do many commission pieces nowadays because a lot of the knives that I make are knives that I've just wanted to make for a really long time and I come up with the profile and I make that particular knife. But talking about commission pieces, one of the reasons why I make templates is actually because of commission pieces. Whenever I'm making a template, the whole point behind it is typically for me to be able to fill it in my hand and get measurements and stuff like that. But a lot of the knives that I make are for people who are local to me and I can take my template, put it in their hand and then go, oh yeah, if it's great here, but it's this needs to be adjusted a little bit because I'm getting a hot spot there and I can actually modify the template real easily and then go, Boom, how's that feel? You put it in their hand, voila, we got a nice custom fit handle shape to that particular person's size of hand. It's not everybody has a hand my size, not everybody has a hand your size. So it's good to be able to do that. Now, the downside to commission pieces is for people who do not live near you. If they don't live near you, can't exactly do that. So you just have to kind of hope that your handle fits that person's hand. It's something that a lot of people don't think about whenever they're making knives is if you're going to do a commission piece and that bad boy is going to cost three, four, five hundred dollars. Heck, what if that knife cost a thousand dollars and they get it and it's nothing but hot spots and it's just uncomfortable for that person's hand? That'd be a nightmare, wouldn't it? So it is nice to have stuff like this. Now, this is a very hand size specific handle. If you didn't do that and you went with more of a simple handle shape, you can make these a lot easier and they'll fit a lot of variety of hand sizes purely because there's no finger choil for here. If you want to call this a pinky choil, you can, or a hook. And then there's no palm swell right here. You know, all that stuff has to fit in a particular way in order for it to be comfortable. But whenever you make a handle like this, it fits a broad spectrum of, of hands. Now, Whenever I'm designing the knives, a lot of that stuff comes into play with the different knives that I've made in the past. And the reason why I say that is, let's say these two knives right here. I actually base a lot of knives on this blade profile, that blade profile, this handle profile, and this handle profile. I've made a lot of choppers with variations of this particular handle. I've made a lot of EDCs, I've made a lot of camp knives, everything with variations of this particular handle. I've made a ton of EDCs and small skinners with this particular hand profile. So you can do a lot of different things, figure out those two profiles that work the best for the most people, and then use those as your bases for a lot of different knives that you make and by default you'll have pretty comfortable handles for a you know broad spectrum of hand sizes but the biggest importance for me is what I think looks awesome what's gonna work with the handle scale material you know 
does this particular handle make sense for the size of knife that I'm making? You know, this might be a little bit too much for a blade this size, but for a chopper, this handle right here is awesome. You know, you want your scale to be right. Handle material to blade length. You don't want this huge handle and then a little bitty blade. You can imagine that big old handle with that little guy right there on the front of it. It would just be goofy looking, you know? This is about as small of a blade as I would put with a handle with this much profiling on it. You know, I would typically go with something like this for a smaller blade style. Now you could do a finger choil on this and modify that a little bit, but me personally, I think about the handle size to blade ratio. I think about what the knife is going to be used for. Is it going to be a chopper? Is it going to be something that might be batoned through something? You know, because if it's going to be batoned through something, you want to make sure that it's got enough bulk on it that you can actually hold it when you're hammering basically on the spine. So I would like something like this I can hold and I can baton on this because I can get a good grip on it. You got something like this and you go to baton this, there's a good chance that that knife is going to wiggle around right here because it doesn't have that palm swell to lock your hand in. That's going to be way more secure. So someone's going to be batoning on it or something like that, I think through that stuff as well. You know, it's not just, ooh, make a pretty knife, and people will buy that pretty knife. A lot of people want to do things with their cool knives, unless you're making a bunch of wall hangers, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with making a wall hanger style knife that nobody's really going to use for anything, because some people just want really cool display pieces, and there's... Like I said, there's no harm in that. That's just not what I particularly like to make. If I make a knife, I want that bad boy to be used. I want someone to beat the hell out of it. I want someone to have to sharpen it because they've absolutely just abused and used the heck out of it. You know, if you get a, you get a knife from somebody and that thing never has to be sharpened, that's crazy. Like you just weren't even using a knife. Uh, that's not to say, you know, that somebody's edge retention isn't miraculous, but these aren't lightsabers, you know, you, you still have to sharpen knives that have amazing edge retention. It's just a by default thing. But, you know, that's beside the point. <laughs> so, when it comes down to, like I said, profiles and things like that, I base the knives on knives that I've made, I base the knives on knives that I've used over the past you know, 20 plus years. I have been a knife collector for over 20 years and I just absolutely love knives. So I've got plenty of them. I mean, heck, I probably have in my house, I would say probably 25, 30 knives that aren't even made by me. And then I probably have another 30 knives that I've kept that are made by me. And uh, it's just something cool. And one of the big reasons why I decided to make knives was not so much to make money. It was because I've had so many knives that I've wanted, but were out of the budget. So I decided, what if I could make a knife? Okay, tried that, made a knife, and it ended up working out. And I was like, I wonder if I could make uh, this type of knife. And I ended up making that knife because I really liked those profiles. And then I thought, huh, I wonder if I can make this one. And then, you know, it just became a big thing. And again, I didn't start doing this because I wanted a secondary income. I started doing this whole knife making thing because I wanted to be able to make all the knives that I've always wanted, but couldn't afford. So that's what I did. And then, <laughs> lo and behold, I started making knives here on YouTube and all of y'all were like, hey, I really like him making knives. And then it became a real thing. Now y'all see me make knives every single week. And I've been doing that for over two years. So it's been pretty cool. You can see that this actually doesn't take a ton of time to go through and do this. It's really not as time consuming as I thought it was going to be. But... <laughs> I'm not going to make y'all sit through too much of it because we're almost 
done and I feel like y'all should be able to see it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna time lapse the rest of this real quick so that y'all can see it completed and then we'll uh, we'll do a little outro and I'm gonna recap a couple of things like the important parts of this. So let's go ahead and do that. Well guys, let's go ahead and end this one right here with some close-ups. So is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. I mean this side looks really good, but as soon as you turn it to this side, you can start seeing some of the little bobbles in the stitching right here. But from right here, not bad. I'm actually really impressed by this sheath. I didn't know that it was going to turn out like this. I didn't know that even though it's not perfect, that it was going to be this successful. I mean, with the knife that we're going to be using for this, that is an awesome snug fit. Like, that is just awesome. I mean, I can't be any happier than this for my first time making one of these. And, you know, I've done plenty of Kydex sheets in the past. Those I have great success with. This is the first time, heck, this is the first time I've ever stitched leather sheaths like this. This is, this is the first time I actually made a sheath, so I, I would assume it'd be the first time I've ever stitched one. Now, there's a few steps that we still need to do to this. We still need to burnish all the edges to get them all smooth and glossy looking. Then we need to use a sealer on it. So I'm going to be doing like a four in one cleaner slash sealer all over this so that it's going to last and you know be nice and supple for a long time so that's what we're gonna do the next episode that you see us working on this we're gonna get the edges all done we're gonna get it sealed everything like that and it will be a completed sheath so be on the lookout for that but when it here's a here's an awesome segue into the profiles so when we were talking about the profiles <laughs> um, I just wanted to hit on the fact that you can make your profiles however you want to do it. The stuff that I was talking about in this episode was purely just stuff that I think about whenever I'm making mine. Whenever I'm going through all of these and I'm doing all these different drawings and making templates and profiles and all that, it's purely based on my aesthetics. If you, let's say you went to my TRE Workshop Facebook page. By the way, it's just TRE Workshop. It's down in the description below. It's not just a the Rivers Experience Facebook page, it is actually a forum based on other knife makers. I'm just happen to be the admin that posts a lot of stuff about the things that I make as well. But there are tons of people, like 830, 850 people on there that just post the stuff that they're working on and we have open discussions about those things. So it's a cool forum, you should definitely go check it out. But on there whenever you're looking at everybody's profiles so many people make so many different styles of knives nobody's just copying and pasting the same knives post after post after post almost every single post has a different style of knife so you're going to see so many different you know aesthetics that people bring into their builds and i think that y'all should do that but definitely think through how that knife is supposed to fit in someone's hand don't put a real smooth tapered handle on a chopper. Do something that's going to lock into their hand. But also don't put a huge bulky handle on something that people are going to use to whittle wood. You, it, the things have to match. The scales have to match. Like the scale of the handle and the scale of the blade have to make sense with what you're doing. So think that stuff through 
when you're making them. Don't be afraid to put it on some template material like I use, some quarter inch thick wood stock, and put it in your hand. See how it feels? Go from there. So, guys, that's the end of this one. If you would, give this video a thumbs up. Share this video, one of my other videos. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. We're going to finish this daily vlog series all the way through to Sunday, so y'all are going to have plenty of more vlogs and things to experience. But guys, y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. I'll catch y'all next time.